Okay, so at this point, I can start to think about how I'm going to cut off this um, material, the noose or the um, masking tape from the shoe. If you have a shoe you don't care about, then maybe one of the most accurate things to do would be to use your X-Acto knife. But if you want to save your shoe and you don't want to cut through it, then you're going to have to plan a little bit differently for how you might do this. So I, ha I do know that in the past, because this was a flexible shoe and this had saran wrap, that I was actually able to just pull the shoe right out of that form. But there's a couple other things that you could think about if you didn't have something flexible. So one is I could cut the bottom of the shoe off using the X-Acto knife because I'm not super worried if I cut a little bit of my rubber sole with that. It's not going to like cut through the fabric. And if I did that, then this other half should be able to slide right off and then I can cut through the rest of those. If cutting the base of the shoe or the sole of the shoe off isn't going to work, you can also just cut any place you have access. Snip right here, even though that's not a cut mark, just snip it so that you can release the shoe from the paper and then you can just tape this back up and then continue to cut around your form. So a um, few of the things that I know I wanna do though before I totally get this off of the shoe is that I'm going to as carefully as I can trim this upper edge so that I have a straight line here. Trying not to cut the shoe if at all possible. So we're going to try to, you know, cut this off as nice and clean as we can. But um, after you make your paper pattern and after you have this, we're going to make a couple mock-ups so we can see how accurate we were, how things fit together. And that will be an opportunity as well for you to adjust and make any changes with your paper pattern that you maybe need. So I am going to very gently cut along this line. I'm not utilizing a lot of pressure because as I said, I don't want to cut through the shoe. So I might just make a few short passes to see once I get through all those layers. And that also will give me a little bit of a read for how much pressure that I need to apply. So. I am going just slow and steady. When I'm working with my knife, I'm bracing my hands. You can see that I kind of have these things balanced. I'm thinking about not having a hand behind me that I'm cutting towards because anytime you're working with something sharp, you want to be really aware of where your other fingers are in relationship to that. If you were to slip off of the form, where would that blade land. And that's another reason why just going slow is a good idea. And also why you don't want a lot of pressure. You're not thinking about trying to cut through all of the layers at once. Sometimes you got to kind of excavate your way through them. And sometimes it's better if you change the angle or the direction at which you're working. So I was having a hard time going around this curve that other way. So I turned the shoe around and I'm having a little bit of an easier time now working my way through. Okay, we're making progress. You might even also be able to, once you kind of get a good flow, 
you have that nice sharp blade. I just changed out this blade. Remember in the other video I talked about safety of um, working with sharp blades and how a sharper blade is usually safer than a dull blade. So that was allowing me to kind of cut through it. I sort of hit a little bit of a slow spot. You also might be able to, you know, at a certain point, get your scissors inside of there. So maybe the X-Acto knife just helps you get started, but a scissors will help you um, kind of get around the form, maybe a little more safe. So if this feels sketchy to you, then go ahead and just use it for that little incision. And then, um, you know, the scissors, slow and steady, will also do the job. And I'm trying to be as careful as I can to be um, accurate on that line. But if I were to cut into the form the wrong way, just stop, tape it back together, and then continue cutting. This is really satisfying. <laughs> I really like this process of removing the tape pieces from the form. Okay. And because you have saran wrap on this, then you also kind of have it so that that paper piece isn't super sticky. Um, sometimes I do like to remove this for when I'm making my um, patterns. I'm going to trace this to a sheet of paper and then it sticks to it. But for now, I'm just going to leave this on here. So I've just got the bottom of the shoe taken care of here. Maybe I'll overlap it with that piece. And um, this should slide out of here. Woohoo! There we go. It's always magic, even though I know it's going to work. Okay. Um, so the next thing I just have to start thinking about where I'm going to be able to cut and what tool might be best for this. Um, I'm going to use um, my scissors because I can get into all of these uh, spaces and I think the scissors is going to be a lot safer than the X-Acto knife. If I were to use the X-Acto knife, I would want to try to have it on some kind of a surface so that I could cut um, safely through it. And the nice thing about this as tape is that it's flexible. And so, you know, I can kind of twist it and, and shape it. You would want cardboard or something else under here if you were cutting so you didn't cut through to your work surface. But anytime you're not using your X-Acto knife, make sure you put your covering on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut through this with my scissors. Sometimes when I get close to the edge of something, instead of using the tip of my scissors, I use the back end of it and just stop right when I think I get to that point. I could go ahead and cut the opposite side. At some point I am going to have to cut this open, so I think I'll go ahead and cut up the back of that. I've cut that a little bit bigger but I'm gonna like up above the base of the seam, but I can always tape that back together. But I just am cutting a little bit more so that I can get my scissors in here more easily to start this cut. Okay, so I have just cut open all of my pieces. A couple of reminders as you are working on this process. Um, there is a learning curve to this. So of course, the more that you do this process, the better that you're gonna get at it and the more accurate your results will be. So if you do this once and it seems like a total mess and a total disaster, it might be worth your time to do it a second time. It will probably go a lot faster the second time and you might have learned some things along the way. So don't be afraid to try this twice. Leave yourself enough time um, to do that. Um, cutting through the tape 
can be work even with the scissors. So that's why I don't want or need five or six layers of tape, why usually three um, is plenty so that I um, have tape that has strength to it, but not um, that it's so dense that um, it's hard to cut through. And then just taking your time to figure out um, where your seams are when you're drawing them and cutting them out is going to be really important. When we go to this next step and we put together our tape mock-ups, that's where you'll realize where you maybe went a little bit wrong um, and where you might need to do some fixes. But that's why we practice and kind of um, problem solve through that. Remember, the idea is, is that um, we want this piece, which on the shoe was rounded, to be able to lay flat without folding or wrinkling over itself. And then that will allow me to cut this out of another flat material, but still have enough bend in it so that I can create that arch um, at the top of the shoe. The same thing with the heel. I want to make sure that this lays flat so that I can get a piece out of that. There's probably going to be some wrinkles in the tape. Um, that's okay, but if you've got a piece that really wants to buckle, then that means that you probably did not accurately um, trace the pattern or figure that out. Um, so this is where we will all need to do a little bit of work um, to figure that out. And then of course I have this piece here that um, is the, the piece that goes around my shoe. And what you can see is a little interesting here is that the front of it has this little curve to it. And that's because the shoe itself kind of has this little swoop up to it. Um, and because I'm going to be working with paper that doesn't have a lot of flex to it, I need the pattern to actually reflect that movement to recreate that arch. If I only just cut a straight strip, then that would make my shoe look like this when it was finished as opposed to having this little curve. So I like to try to play with the accuracy of the shoe and the accuracy of the template, but there are some ways that we can modify and just sort of know that, oh, that modification will change that. It also adds a little bit of tension to this center here, so that might mean this is going to look funny or I need to add a little there. Anyways, things that we'll play with in the next um, video where I show you how to mock up a paper pattern of your shoe.